Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning to discuss leadership during the COVID crisis. I want to thank Dr. Freischlag and all the planners for uh, inviting me to be a part of this. My job is to talk a little bit about what it was like to lead our national organization, the American College of Surgeons, during the COVID crisis. I have no disclosures. The way we approached this was to think of principles of crisis leadership. And I want to review with you about 10 different principles that we used during this uh, entire three month period and really continue to do so today. The first is as a leader, you've got to be present. I stayed in Chicago. I've come to the building here in Chicago every day to take advantage of the infrastructure. Our entire staff was deployed at home and have done that very successfully. And we've been able to then provide them the resources to work. But by being here in Chicago myself, I'm available when questions come up, available to help uh, solve problems on the fly. And it's really just seemed to be the only way to do that. So be present, be available. And uh, today, it's a matter of creating the infrastructure, particularly IT infrastructure, to support uh, going about business in the usual way. Second principle is really to communicate. And that means uh, in three different ways. First of all, you have to uh, communicate about everything. Um, and uh, you don't know that necessarily going into a crisis, but there's a way to organize your thinking so that you are sure to touch uh, on things that you're not sure uh, whether have been uh, clarified for people. And you do that through the creation of an incident command uh, center. Secondly, you have to do it frequently. And uh, it's always been said that, that you can't communicate too much. And I think during a crisis, that's particularly true. We uh, created a communication vehicle in the college that uh, basically uh, looked to be the source of truth for surgeons during this pandemic. And we uh, initially did that by producing it twice a week using all the resources that we normally use to produce our other vehicles. Finally, it's, it's essential to be truthful. And whether it's about uh, what we don't know whether it's about financial uh, problems that may arise, as many have been threatened during this pandemic, it's essential to let people know what their options are and to be truthful and as clear as you can be uh, when uh, things are just not clear. Now, when we went about this, we prioritized what we would, would focus on, and we picked personal safety to physicians and uh, nurses and patients as priority number one. Uh, at the same time, our ability to provide care during that time. And those came in a little bit into conflict when we had to slow down surgery to protect beds and patients uh, and uh, staff by limiting the number of, of elective surgical procedures. We had to worry about financial solvency so that we could assure that our organization was able to do the work to support surgeons. And we tried to do that to help surgeons in their practice and in their hospitals. And finally, I think it's very important that we as a leader provide hope. That's done by a balance of expressing the current reality, thinking about what's ahead, but also trying to put a positive spin on that as best can be done. Now, another principle that's important is to look at yourself as a leader. And you can approach this in a negative way, or you can have what we'll call pragmatic optimism. You have to be realistic. This is a crisis. But people look to you to really stimulate them and be positive and think about solutions going forward. So if you will, everybody has to be singing from the same piece of music. And we really stress that in our internal meetings and in what we try to communicate to surgeons uh, around the country. You do that by being inclusive and approachable. You make yourself available. You've got to maintain a sense of humor. Uh, and uh, that's something that, that uh, I think we all need to always think about. It's OK to laugh. It's, it's, it's uh, important to not take ourselves too seriously. And you have to follow your values. For the co college, those are professionalism, excellence, inclusion, introspection, and innovation. And they served us all very well during this pandemic. 
Now, uh, it's important that a leader work with the constituents, and that means managing relations both above and below. So for us, it included working with our fellows and staff, working with our governing board and our, and our leadership, working with our finance people to make sure that we are financially accountable and we are watching the budget and planning accordingly. And we also then have a great responsibility to work with external organizations. For us, that includes government having da almost daily conversations with CMS during the peak of this epidemic, and then working with other uh, resources like the military. We uh, constantly tried to prevail by maintaining resilience and patience. We use this as an opportunity to look through the fog of war, if you will, for clarity. And I think as a leader, the best way to do that is to create a vision, even if it's fleeting or wrong, if you have clarity about where you think the next step to go is, that's useful to others that are trying to follow you. So you have to be strategic. You have to decide if you need to climb over the wall where you're going to put the ladder. But it doesn't have to be perfect. And you start by following that plan, and then you adapt and change as you need to. Examples of that in our current epidemic were initially the call for doing physical distancing. We all knew what that meant initially, but ultimately that came down to curtailing elective surgery for a period of time. So the college stepped outside of themselves and helped create guidelines by specialty through committees formed on the fly to do so, and I think provided a great service to uh, the population, but also to their surgeon colleagues. We did it by creating an incident command center. That center meant daily to uh, internally manage our resources, but also externally respond to the needs of our fellows and also uh, government and uh, the Department of Defense. And finally, our strategic communication plan became collapsing all of our resources in what was new scope or uh, the bulletin into a twice weekly uh, newsletter that was produced by a combination of fellows and staff. Uh, and we worked very, very hard to do that, created a new uh, software template to deliver that. And basically, I think it was met with a lot of, of interest and expectations. And we've actually continued it on going forward. Now, the advice uh, had to focus on several things, and others will speak to this, uh, talking about how they organize themselves within a hospital. But we basically suggested that you make decisions in a hospital through a collective governance committee. And really, the infrastructure that we have in place through our quality programs, either in the Red Book or cancer or trauma, et cetera, is the basis upon which a multidisciplinary committee comes through to solve problems day to day. And we uh, used that model and applied that here. For instance, how to go ahead and actually triage and limit cases. People came up with very innovative ways to do that. This is a, a tool that was developed at the University of Chicago. So when things like this came forward to our attention, we then in turn tried to promote them to others around the country. The same issues came up then with diagnostic testing, as you know, the use of personal protective equipment, how do you uh, co create capacity in your hospital to scale as COVID patients increased? And how do you prepare your healthcare workers to deal with this stress and the problems accompanying uh, caring for these patients? And we won't go into the detail of this, but each of these areas was something we at the college addressed, tried to get the best practice that we could find around the country, and in turn then communicate that back to fellows. Similarly, as we came out of this, patients raised questions about the safety of going back and having elective surgery, and we created a campaign that was, was tailored and, and uh, uh, communicated directly to patients. That continues to go on today and to assure them uh, what the indications they, they should look for when they choose to go back and have their elective surgery. And finally, we had to constantly think about scaling. So uh, anytime there's an unpredictable crisis, and we're now right in the middle of this scaling back up, we're all trying to figure out what's the best strategy. And by using uh, the mechanisms I've talked about, 
we could then uh, invoke everybody to think about bed capacity, equipment needs, support, ventilators, PPE, staffing, and try and then and reach out to other resources such as FEMA or the Department of Defense to help even build hospitals when that was considered necessary for their speakers. Finally, I think it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, it's really important that we as leaders take care of ourselves. We've got to eat, sleep, and exercise. We have to practice emotional intelligence. We've always got to be looking ahead, and we will get through this. Again, thank you very much for the opportunity to share these thoughts with you today.